That, oh man, I wasn't even going there, but. <laughs> oh, I don't care about the verse. I'm a macro guy. You're giving me like micro details here. I want the big picture. The... I want to believe, convert me. You really want to do this? <laughs> no, forget it. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I got I to gotta go to get Hey, to look, sleep. everybody makes mistakes. I make mistakes. Tobia Singer makes mistakes. I think the guy is very bright. I mean, I've been dying to debate the guys. I, do I think I'm going to win? Absolutely. But, I mean, I think the guy is extremely bright. I think Michael Brown's also extremely bright. Everyone can make mistakes. It's like if I could put them in a line on who I think is the brightest, I mean, I don't think Toby Singer would be there. He's very bright in Tanakh. This is something that I never really try to do, which is try to explain what Tanakh's trying to tell you. And this is why I think many people get upset because the bulk of that is just his opinion. If it's not just his opinion, like he's just going to quote one commentator. But there's so many other commentators. I'll accept any interpretation of what someone wants to say Tanakh is trying to tell them just because it can't change Torah. So it doesn't matter anyways. If you guys want to know who I think is the brightest on YouTube right now, I would say it's Rabbi David Barchaim. That's my opinion. When number two... Rabbi Herschel Schechter. There is also Rabbi Aryeh Leibowitz. There is uh, Rabbi Arn Rukefet. I think Rabbi Haim Ovadia is very intelligent as well. And that's probably like my top. How, how do you there. feel about Rabbi uh, Jonathan Sachs? He's not a halacha rabbi. He's a life coach. Yeah, yeah. He's on the level of even Rabbi Mizrahi and Rabbi Yaron Rubin. These guys are not fulfilling the role of rabbi. They're fulfilling the role of a rebbe or Like I said, a life coach. Kind of awkward that they hate Jesus so much, but they really sound like Jesus more than an Orthodox rabbi. The job of an Orthodox rabbi is to give you the halacha. Even what I'm doing here tonight, the bulk of it is just what I've always claimed to be. More like an investigative reporter to give you something to think about, to be incisive, to open up your perspective to other opinions in Judaism. Okay, But I'm only a rabbi when I'm giving you the law. That's it. When I'm giving you the halacha, I'm fulfilling my role as a rabbi. But if all I'm going to do is just talk about spirituality and make you feel nice and that, I'm a life coach. I'm a motivational speaker, right? But that's not what should solidify you as a rabbi. Oh, you're a fake rabbi. You're a, this. a rabbi is someone who gives over halacha. So if you're a rabbi like, and you don't know halacha, then you're not a rabbi. Like my friend Hassan El said, everyone today is a fake rabbi. Okay, because this smicha was invented in 1538 in Sfat. It's not real smicha. It's, it's just ceremonial. It doesn't mean anything. right? I mean, no one here has smicha going all the way back to Moshe Rabbeinu. Like, no one judges on the Sanhedrin. So everyone is free to give their opinion. I'm saying colloquially what the notion of rabbi really means. But if any rabbi wants to debate me or interview me or allow me to interview him, just put me in contact with him. I'm always looking for people. To I'm kind of hyped for the Nichols guy to come by. I'm respectful. I'm not, uh, I mean, I believe what I believe and I respect other people's beliefs. But I mean, if they try to convince me otherwise, then I have to sort of counter that. Hey, Rob, but, uh, uh, what's up with you and G-Man? Are you going to debate G-Man? G-Man. Oh, boy. Who's that was, he was the Christian that came in last week with the black Hebrew Israel guy. I don't think he wants to debate me. I... That other guy that was saying that he, uh, he plays for keeps. That guy. No, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't debate everyone. You really do. Look, I'll tell you, just because it would be unfair. One, it would be a waste of time because I don't want to discuss race. I don't care what color the Hebrews were. I mean, I made five videos about the black Hebrew Israelites probably 10 years ago. And that was my contribution to wasting any time about race. And heck, I even have a video saying the original Hebrews weren't white, too, just to sort of mix it up. But that's on there. People could watch those over and over. It's a stupid topic. And that's it. Now, if I felt that they wanted to discuss something with more substance, because a lot of them are Christian, like if they wanted to debate that or their attacks on modern Jews, I think it benefits me if people don't listen to my lectures before they talk to me. Sorry about that. I gave away. (laughs) No, that's my biggest advantage. Even rabbis, when they get on the air with me, they'll say, oh, well, we all believe this and we all believe that. So that shows that you're wrong and they don't know where I'm going to come from in the discussion. So that's my biggest thing. Yeah, I, I'm the one that told, I think it's G-Man, like, hey, oh really get off of here and go binge watch his videos. Because I think you're going to step into a snake pit and you're not even going to know it. But that would really equip everyone. Like if people would just kind of try to attack me from that perspective. Like, oh, well, he doesn't believe this. I'm going to just mark up a whole notebook on how he's wrong in this area. Then that's better instead of just 
being a demagogue and just, uh, you I'm, know, just yeah. I'm waiting for my day. My like, you know, you I don't stayed, believe this, huh? I stayed up with him uh, till three o'clock last Monday. Three o'clock in the morning. Yes, him wow. and the uh, fellow that was going to be a convert. Uh, uh-huh. What's his name? Uh, you a modest one of the, you? He, he was one of the ones that was going to be a convert. G-Man really calmed down when the crowd got smaller. And then he became more serious. So I don't know what was up with that. Wow. But I, I want to pick your brain, Rabbi. I don't know if we have any more time. Yeah, go for it. Why not? I'm trying to pick your brain about a conversion. And, and you have this mission to convert to orthodoxy. But I think there's a... I, I want to know why... Why you um, is is your background Baptist? Yes, ma'am. Now, do you think that maybe your your gift to have conversion to orthodoxy stems from that Baptist background? How so? Well, because Baptists believe that uh, John the Baptist was a converter, and that. That that influences oh, there no. to give you a gift to do that for Judaism. Yeah, I don't think. I'm just trying to pick your brain. I don't think the Southern Baptist Convention is with the descendants of ideologically of the Anabaptists or to John the Baptist in terms oh, of no, no, baptism. No, no, no. All Christians believe in baptism. Yeah, I I used to be a minister. I, I understand these things. What um, made you uh, leave? Uh... If you don't mind me asking, JC for Havilos Barocca. Oh, boy. No. Sure, we'll save that for the next right, we'll discussion. You know, I don't think that someone needs to have a Baptist background to want to convert everyone to their religion. And heck, if anyone even sold drugs, would they know that if you have a product, marketing is probably 90% of the game. Right? There's strength <laughs> in numbers. <true>. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, no, I didn't mean that. No, Sorry. No, I think that you have to be taught otherwise. In any other area of life, here, look, for example, Jews are great marketers. They're great in promoting isms and causes. They're just terrible at promoting Judaism. But from Marxism to feminism to secularism, I mean, Jews are in your face. They're also into proselytizing. They just don't proselytize Judaism. (laughs) But they proselytize Noahism. I think that if you find something good in life, you should be in the business of saying what's good for me is good for others. That's just you know the right thing to do. It says this. The Rambam writes in the third mitzvah, in Sefer Mitzvot, he says that the mitzvah of loving Hashem is doing what Avram Avinu did in Haran. He says because Avram Avinu fell in love with God, he wanted everyone to fall in love with God as well. To his understanding of God. So it shows that it wasn't some Noahite understanding. He was in the covenant. He wanted to bring others into the covenant. To whatever extent... That was not applying the Medrash. I understand the whole notion of Haran is a different story, really. You know, But it shows that if you love something, you want to share it. And if you care about people, I mean, especially people who are not related to you, the biggest sign of that is like bringing everyone to your level. I don't think Christianity has anything to do with that. But yeah, I was a Christian. I went to seminary that was ordained. This is over what's, 20 what's years sem- ago. What seminary did you go to? Jacksonville Baptist Theological Seminary. I also went to another one that was Assemblies of God, actually. It was called just like Christ for the Nation something. Oh, yeah. And I'm familiar with that. It's interesting. He probably wouldn't remember me. I mean, I've debated Michael Brown like five times or so. But I actually spoke to Michael Brown over 20 years ago because I was trying to get into a school in Pensacola, Florida. I went to this uh, bronze revival. I mean, I applied for his school of ministry. This is a long time ago. Of course, I'm not going to tell him this like on the show. Yeah, I mean, I like I was involved. 